Hey everybody, Chris Kao here, Game Director for DC Universe Online. And I'm Jens Anderson, the Creative Director in DC Universe Online. And welcome to Inside the Studio, yet again, where we take your questions from Facebook and answer them the best way we can, or as much as marketing will allow. <laughs> it depends each day. So let's start right in. What do you say, Jens? All right, I'm ready. All right, Timothy K asks, what does the dev team most hope to implement in terms of gameplay in DCUO? What do they feel will give gamers that feeling of being truly super heroic? Well, first of all, we have to look at what license we have, right? So there are all different kinds of superhero licenses, and we happen to have the coolest one, which is DC. Okay, and DC characters, DC heroes and villains are over the top. I mean, they're just like, a little, just a little bit, right? I mean, guys like Superman, you know, who are going out into space and like spinning fighting planets off the backwards. alien armada, and yeah, I don't know if we'll do the whole <laughs> spinning planet thing, but you get the idea. I mean, these guys are like godlike heroes, right? They're incredibly powerful. Okay, anyway, so how are we going to pay off on this stuff? Well. We want you to feel super heroic like these characters. So as you start off the game, you're going to be already in a very action-oriented environment, okay? Physics plays a big part. You're going to be like, you know, hitting objects and knocking them down the street. Guys are going to be getting knocked up. You're going to be juggling them and smacking them back down to the ground, doing combos with whatever superpower or weapon you have. Anything to Anything from any classic action game you like to play, right? Yep. It's right there. It's just in a world, in a big shared world, that's a massively multiplayer world. And as your character grows, you're going to get more and more powerful. You're going to gain new abilities in your power set. Let's say you're an ice guy. You know, you kind of start out out doing some cool things and maybe some ice armor and That's you're right. kind of, you know summoning up these big ice boulders and smashing people later you're freezing people in the whole room all around you with like Chilly. you know ice blocks and things like that and then punching that ice block down the street um, we just really want you to feel super powerful. We're hooking in the action mechanics and physics in a big way to do that. And we're really trying to ground the characters and make them feel like they're real DC characters. And so to answer your question, Timothy, we already have it, right? We have the license. We have the action reaction of the physics and the action combat. We have the stories going on. We have everything we need to make you feel the most heroic or most villainous you can. Especially the inspired by feature that we True. have the character create, right? Where you actually, we make it really easy for you to be your favorite superhero. Or I should say, be like your favorite superhero. You want to be like Batman, you want to be like Superman or Green Lantern. We give you this option where you can just kind of click on that character and it fills in the template for you and you can go from there. You can do any little noodling you want to. You can change so, it if you want. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. You know, oh, I want to be Batman but with super speed, you know, something like that. Yep. Um, so we give you all the tools you need to put that together. Cool. Michael P. asks, will there be street clothes options for our heroes, villains? For example, Static, Crimson Avenger, etc. For sure. In fact, Crimson Avenger. There you go. Uh, this is Kool-Aid <laughs> Avenger. No? Oh, that's true. <laughs> Wrong brand. All right. Well, you know how it goes. There are a lot of different character create options. In fact, I think we pretty much cover everything. Yeah. Every time we say that, we need to add a little asterisk because someone comes up with something else, but <laughs> you'd be amazed at how many different types of clothing there are. Tons and of looks. And actually, sort of the more street clothing or cool clothing that you might just wear and see in other types of action games, we have as well. Because realize, we want to have be able to serve any sort of hero or villain you come up with in your imagination. So if you really like wearing your underwear on the outside, right, that's your thing. Throw a cape on, hit the skies, you're good to go, right? That's classic DC. But if you are sort of more urban or sort of more modern, you can definitely throw on the hoodie, sneakers, and jump from building top to building top. The type of hero you are is up to you, what powers you have and what you can do. In the same way, what you look like is up to you. And as we've mentioned before, you can change that look throughout the entire game as you pick up more gear and pick up more customization options. So you're gonna continually evolve your look, be able to save them out and swap between them as you like. So. Lots of stuff to I don't, wear. I don't all think sorts there was of different a, ever any doubt that we were going to have street clothes. You've been the ambassador yeah, of the hoodie since I actually, we started this I really had to fight for the hoodie. <laughs> we have this character lead, Jason Smith, who I give a lot of grief to, who uh, didn't want to put in things like loafers. He like, why are loafers in a superhero <laughs> game? I'm all, what if I want to be business suit man? I need to be able to be business suit man, right? So no, in all seriousness, they've given us a great you know, variety of clothes, biker clothes, goth clothes, all the sorts of... I guess you might call them, you know, sort of specialized regular clothes you might see people yep. wear, yep. especially here in Austin, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, for sure. <laughs> and uh, you'll just have all those options, so don't worry about it. Cool. Cool. All right, Chris M. asks, at the beginning of the game, do you have to pick between Metropolis and Gotham City to start the game, or will you be able to travel to both cities anytime? 
Well, at the beginning of the game, when you go through the, the sort of character create process and you go through your origin story, um, you kind of choose what your character is going to be like. And that dictates where you're going to start. You know, think of it like usually when you're starting out in a game. It's almost in a like game. an origin yeah, story. Yeah, an origin or something like that. But it's like, you know, you, in some fantasy games, you might choose a race and therefore you start out in that That's race right. as kind of home city. We took a different kind of approach to it and based it off of this origin experience that you're going to go through. And so if you choose a meta character, for instance, you're going to start off in Metropolis. As you choose a tech character, you're going to start off in uh, Gotham City because they're kind of anchored with, you know, Superman and Batman. Those but origins. if you choose a magic character, you'll start off in Chinatown, a very That's magical right. place within Metropolis. Exactly. So basically, where you start is dictated by the kind of character that you create. And then quickly after that sort of origin experience and going through the first episode, few episodes in the game, you're really free to travel anywhere you want to go. In fact, you can travel anywhere you want to go right at the beginning. That's uh, right. But you're uh, just if you really sightseeing. Feel yeah, if you feel like it. If you really feel like going and picking on high level content by yourself at level one, we, go for it. The game will tell you how successful you'll be at that. So yeah, you'll you'll be able to go anywhere you really want. You'll be going back and forth between Gotham and Metropolis, uh, up and down to the Watchtower, the secret location of the Hall of Doom, uh, all different kinds of different locations in the DC universe. You'll be free to travel, uh, travel to. Remember, it's a world. It's the DC universe online, literally, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to step into the streets of these cities, and they're going to be like real cities. Of course a few things going wrong in them, mm -hmm. but you'll be able to go anywhere and do whatever you'd like there. This is a real shared world space. This isn't just a game on your PS3 or on your PC. This is a game that you're going to see thousands of other players in sharing that world. David R. asks, will DCUO player character costume creation include good-looking anthropomorphic animal heads? Wait, 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 wait. Anthropomorphic animal heads? Yes. Say that again. Anthropomorphic animal Anthropomorphic heads. Anthropomorphic animal heads. Continue. Does, <laughs> it, does everybody know what that is? Basically, are you going to be able to put an animal head on your body? A shark head or a turtle head or but something like that. Anthropomorphic means human-like. Yes. A human-like shark. Okay. Anyway, to finish the question, to which additional items such as human hairstyles, accessories like masks or sunglasses and various coloration patterns can be added? Now, you see us pause here and ask <laughs> because David, this is kind of a weird question, but shockingly, yes you can, that's right. We actually have a bunch of cat and sort of fox heads in the game mm -hmm. right now that have different style of ears, they have different sort of pattern skin, and you can slap masks on them, you can slap hat on them. The human hair, not so much, you already get a whole lot of hair all over your body with the skin and the tail and everything else. So if you're looking to make a, shall we say, furrier yes, kind of hero exactly. or villain, you can do that. You definitely can. In fact, someone sent me a picture recently. They did. Right? And uh, this, this person has this character in their mind's eye of what they want to do. Kind of this teenage, uh, cat-like character, uh, anime It's called like style. a burst lion or yeah, something? Yeah, burst lion, I think it was, right? And uh, Chris did a really cool thing. He actually, a couple of our a couple of our uh, people actually went around and, and tried designers tried to recreate this character that they saw. And Chris picked the best one out of the bunch and actually posted it up on the but forum. The webs, yeah. yeah. It was so, pretty cool. without That's marketing knowing, now. too, I'm sure they're glad to find this out right now. So, <laughs> thanks a lot for those suggestions. We'll keep working around marketing with you anytime, 24 7. <laughs> but in all seriousness, we have a few of them. We don't have the truly odd thing, so I will just clarify we don't yeah, have the shark. We don't have the shark head or the turtle head or anything. As much like as Aquaman that. would love to have the shark anthropomorphic head in the game, not so much. Yeah. But we do have a few, and they should be great. Mike S. asks, Will we be able to make characters that can use a shrinking power set or a growing power set? Like, will we be able to face off against Giganta? Ah, cool. Uh, good question, Mike. Thank you for that. Um, very DC. Yes, very DC. So there's a lot of different kind of shape changing that we uh, talked about when we first, you know, we're looking at the powers for the project. We identified stretchy characters like Plastic, Plastic Man, Man yeah. and Elongated Man. We identified shape shifters in the in the mode of like Beast Boy or maybe even Morphers like Martian Manhunter. And then we did size stuff. We talked about Giganta and uh, the Atom, right? And even transmute like Metamorpho, I mean, yeah, sure. there's like a bunch of different varieties. Alter their body into different chemical structures and things like that. So we really needed to provide as large of a breadth of powers as possible, and we wanted to focus on the one we thought would be really paying off well right now on the shape-changing stuff. We had and to choose a place to start, basically. Yeah, exactly, which is the Beast Boy, Martian Manhunter kind of aspect, you know, morphing into other people or actually transforming into an animal. So at launch, we're not going to have the size shrinking stuff for players, but we do have it in our content. It's a very important 
important part of the content. So you will be facing off against Giganta, in fact, in one of the Wonder Woman episodes. Yep. Uh, actually, with Wonder Girl. So uh, there's really there's cool a bunch stuff of size going swapping going on there. People exactly. shrinking and growing all over the place. Exactly. So you will see it. Um, uh, you may not see it on the other side. The Adam, he's in there. Uh, a lot, you know, if There's you can a whole find mission him, to try to, yeah, yeah. Uh, you get a special there. prize. Oh, you know, he's there. Is I he? put him in myself. Oh, yeah, barely the size of a pixel. So I think I'll win this contest hands down. Oh well, shocking, shocking. <laughs> All right, let's get on to the next question here. Allison asks, "What options will there be to create compelling female characters that are inspired by Wonder Woman? Can we have bracelets like Wonder Woman's? What about hairstyles that show behind the mask?" Well, that's you are like the fashion. I know guy. it's three yeah. fashion questions, three good ones right there. Take it, Kale. So obviously, female characters are an important part of the DC universe. Wonder Woman being perhaps the most recognized comic character in the world, female comic character. Mm -hmm. That's a huge plus, and obviously important for the license. So yes. Ladies have all the options. In fact, ladies have, in some cases, more options than men. One of the fights that's going on right now internally, and yes, we do have them, you know, with big nerf swords and shields and sort of nerd battle against each other. And words. And words, is because we have this set that's called the Kabuki set, which is very Japanese set, uh, setup. But the, on the ladies' side, they actually have a little backpack that has this cute little panda in it. But the guys don't get that. And so all of the guys in the, in the game are like, and all the guys in the studio are like, wait a second, why don't I get a panda? And so there's this huge uproar. So in a few cases, there's actually female specific gear. Why? Well, because ladies have a whole different aesthetic to them, a different shape, and especially in the DC comics, that's portrayed. So in most cases, the armor's actually been refit or new pieces have been made to make sure that the female silhouettes are all there. They're represented in all of the powerful DC ways you can imagine. And specifically in the case of Wonder Woman and a lot of the stuff that goes on with more of the iconics, you'll see some of it. Now in Wonder Woman's case, her bracelets are very specific, right? Yeah. They are hers, just Gifts like the lasso the gods, is, right? So. Gifts from the gods. So not hers exactly, but expect to be able to find things in that style. And in fact, Amazonian gear or loot that you'll be yes. able to get. It just can't be those specific things. They're a little bit more special than you would imagine, so. Absolutely. Well, those were great questions, guys. We thank you very much for that. Keep posting on Facebook. We and love answering this stuff. Keep doing it, and we'll keep working with marketing to bring you the best thing possible because they love us just like we love you. So <laughs> stay out there, Facebookers, and keep posting for DC Universe Online. We'll see you in the game. See you later. Sony.